Hello. Hey, Dad. How's that white Christmas looking? You promised, remember? <laughs> Meredith! Of course, it's coming down as we speak. Wait till you see it. Great. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Uh, my plane lands Tuesday at 5.30. Perfect. How will you get here? Will someone pick you up? Obviously. I've got the best chauffeur around. His name starts with a T and ends with Amos Weiss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I hear he's the best in the business. I'll make sure he's there. 5.30 sharp. Oh, thanks, Dad. See you soon. Two more nights, Em. <laughs> Can't wait to see you. Same here. Say hi to Mom for me. Bye, Dad. Bye, Em. Have a safe trip. Good morning, Thomas. I bet you woke up feeling like a million dollars after winning that monster pot last night. Morning, Frank. That felt like $96.40, actually. <laughs> but yeah, I had a great night's sleep. Ha! <laughs> I bet. It looks like you've hit the jackpot again today. There's hardly any Christmas mail rush because of the snow. Ah, great. The sooner I can stretch out by the fire, the better. Ha! That's a strategy right out of my playbook. Take it easy out there today. Parcel, Thomas. Don't forget the parcel. With your queen of hearts, when everyone holds your forge to holds, your place in your bed, showing no regret. Christmas gift? Here's hoping. You got me tiptoeing around you like you made a flag. Hey, Beth. How are you on this fine day? Thomas, hi. Well, business as usual. No, I'm just joking. The situation is not that dire. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, sales can't be bad with the holidays around the corner, right? Times have been better, I suppose, but you're right. I'm not complaining. Besides Mildred, there's been an odd customer or two today, and would you believe... One of them was even looking for a full set of encyclopedias. Oh, never knew you had a clone walking around out there. <laughs> well, that certainly would be something, wouldn't it? There wouldn't be enough books to discuss or wine to consume. By the way, did you know that the world's largest encyclopedia was created in 15th century China and comprised about 11,000 books? Isn't that fascinating? Imagine having to load that into your car. <laughs> I don't think my trusty old van could take that. Or my bookcase, for that matter. Well, they do say a good book is easy to pick up, but hard to put down. Get it? <laughs> How's Emily coming along with Christmas dinner, by the way? I can imagine she's pretty excited about Meredith coming over. So let me know if she needs any more cookbooks. I've got this beauty from Good Housekeeping that's all the rage right now. I'll be sure to ask her. But you know how Emily gets in the kitchen. There'll be so much food, we'll be eating stuffing all week. I suppose you're right. But don't you worry, I'll leave the cookbook. I have a feeling St. Nicholas has other things in store for you this year. 
<laughs> Looking forward to it already. As well you should. And what does St. Nick have in store for you this year? Doing anything special? I'm flying out to Georgia tomorrow to spend Christmas with my Daniel and his wife for a few days. We're planning a Hawaii Five-O marathon. It's my guilty pleasure, and luckily it's theirs too. Ah, of course. Uh, book them, Dano. Indeed. Have you seen it? Who hasn't? Oh, marvelous. What was your favorite episode so far? Uh, the one where they did that thing with the pineapples and the fingerprints. That was some great writing. It's simply my favorite cop show out there right now. I do love a bit of action and intrigue. It's like Sherlock Holmes with tire spins. And Daniel has just bought a great big new television set, so I can't wait to watch it on that. Oh, I can imagine. Right. I better get back to it and get ready for the New Year's sale. I've been in a perpetual fight with my pricing gun lately, so I need all the time I can get. And good things come to those who wait. I'll bring over your presents later in the week. I hope you have a Merry Christmas Eve tomorrow, and give my love to Emily and Meredith. Will do. And season's greetings to you two. Hello, Angie. Long time no see. One package for you today. Thanks, Thomas. How's Emily? Oh, other than absolutely hating the snow, she's doing just fine. Oh, believe me, I can relate. I simply wasn't built for snow. Guess I'll always be a California girl at heart. <laughs> well, Em's from the Midwest, but same deal. So, what do we have here? Oh, right. Sounds like you got a hefty tax bill. Well, usually come in envelopes. It's just some things from L.A. Toiletries, stuff like that. I, um, recently ended my relationship. Ah, I see. I'm sorry it's not a hefty tax bill instead. It's fine. It was my decision, and it was the right decision. The long distance thing just wasn't working out. Still, seeing your spare toothbrush, that shampoo bottle, a stick of deodorant, it just makes it so definite, you know? Like, the LA chapter of my life is now finally completely closed. Sounds like you're dealing with it like a champ, though. How did your ex take it? My ex-girlfriend, you mean? Yeah, she's handling it okay. Other than the passive-aggressive shipping of toiletries, I guess. <laughs> oh, did you... not know? <laughs> well, surely it's none of my concern. <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly something I walk around advertising around here. <laughs> this is probably the first time I've seen you blush. Breaking up right before Christmas Eve must be extra tough. Yeah, 
That does add to the melancholy. Timing isn't exactly my strong suit, I guess. Well, I'll leave you alone with your thoughts. And your spare toothbrush. Merry Christmas, Angie. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Thomas. My toothbrush and I bid you adieu. Okay, let's get this to its destination. Hi, Ben. Got a pretty hefty package here for you. Ah, uh, thanks, Thomas. I've been waiting for that one. Hi, Mr. W. Please, please, please tell me the mail truck needs a tune-up. <laughs> hey, Lori. 
Nope. I'm sorry to say the truck's running like a song. Uh, we're actually, I'm very happy about that. But it's bad news for you. And as you can see, Lori's taken a head start on working at the garage. Part time, and only when she's finished her homework. Ah, uh, are you sure there's nothing I can improve on the old, um, what do you call this thing again? Hmm, come to think of it, maybe there is. The horn's been making this sad little sound lately. It could use a little more oomph. The horn, eh? I'm on it! That was easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Mr. W. Diaphragm had gotten a little dusty, but it's all better now. The mail truck is honking like a big old goose again. Thanks, Lori. Come to think of it, I will be calling your truck the goose from here on out. Big, white, wobbly, and with a honking great horn. Honk, honk! The goose has a nice ring to it. Or a nice honk, anyway. Well, gotta be getting back to my rounds. Happy holidays, you guys. Thanks, Thomas. You too. Parcel. <laughs> Hi there, Mr. Mailman. Got anything for me today? I have one special delivery for you, ma'am. And we can have a little chat if you'd like. Ooh, a little chat. I'm afraid I'm a bit too busy for that, sir. Oh, you sound an awful lot like my wife. I hardly see her these days. Oh, what a shame. Well, you must have a lovely wife. You can say that again. She's the light of my life. Oh, I better get this, honey. I'll see you tonight. Oregon Trail Motel. How may I help you?
hello. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Meredith. Are you all packed for tomorrow? Um... Meredith? Dad, I'm so sorry, but I won't be able to make it tomorrow. What's wrong? What happened? Are you okay? I'm fine, Dad. Don't worry. But I'm just... I'm snowed under with work. It's added 86. It needs to be up and running at the start of the new year. I stumbled upon some errors today, and now we need to fix them this week. This sucks. Yep, it sure does. Is that Steve guy pressuring you again? No. It's not Steve's fault. We've all worked so hard this year. Can't squander it all in the last week, right? You're right, Meredith. Christmas is just a few days. Your career lasts a lifetime. Have you told your mom yet? Yeah, I just called her at the motel. Oh, someone's calling. It must be your mom. Okay, well, that's my cue. Gotta get back to it. I'll call again soon, Dad. Love you. Hey, Em. Is that you? <laughs> if by Em you mean Emily, then yes. If you mean Em for Meredith, then no. <laughs> I just got off the phone with my other Em, so I was pretty sure it was you. <laughs> oh, Thomas. Don't joke around as if nothing's wrong. What else can we do? It's just Christmas. Well, just deal with it, like we always do. Why don't we invite someone else? Unless you're happy with just Mildred coming over. That's a good idea. I'll think about it and maybe invite someone tomorrow. Okay, honey. As long as you don't invite Jack, you know, his jokes may even scare off the turkey. In any case, I'll call Beth and ask her again, too. And then I have to do a towel run, refill the vending machine, and vacuum the reception area. So it'll be a while before I'm done. I'll see you tonight, honey. Okay, Em. Drive home safe. Major League Baseball umpires are required to wear black underwear while on the job in case they split their pants. Golf is the only sport to have been played on the moon. On February 6, 1971, Alan Shepard hit a golf ball on the moon. <laughs> because of the low gravity, it may have traveled more than a mile. On the snowfall. Pio positive for that P. Take it away, Charles. Jack, I'd like to respond to what Cheryl said about the snow yesterday. Sure, it makes everything nice and quiet, but we can't forget the sweet sound of crunching snow beneath our boots. Christmas gift? Here's hoping. Greetings, Nancy. Hello, Thomas. That should be the last batch of Christmas pudding ingredients. Mmm, sounds good. Is it for you or for the store? For the store, of course. I'm not gonna change my cooking schedule just because of Christmas. Isn't that the best part of Christmas? I'd rather save myself the time and effort. 
So you don't change your cooking schedule at all? Not now, not ever. Monday's mac and cheese, chili on Tuesday, meatloaf Wednesday, cheeseburger Thursday, fish Fridays, Saturday steak and mash, and it's corn on the cob Sundays. Ah, I see. And you've had this schedule for a while now? A little over 20 years. If it works, it works. It sure does. I'll be on my way now. Okay, let's get this to its destination. And yet another satisfied customer. circles sometimes. Good day, Kay. Hi, Thomas. I've got a parcel for you. Ah, thanks. I'm sure Mo, uh, Santa will be happy this arrived just in time. <laughs> Anything I can do to help the old man out. How are you holding up today? Oh, I can't complain. Everything is pretty much set. My toes are practically frozen together, but I have to say... I do love winter. Homemade milk and cookies, candy, a whole village of snowmen and women in the yard. Kids give you the perfect excuse to go all out with that stuff. 
Ah, uh, yes. I remember those days. Back when you and Santa were growing up, you mean? <laughs> hey, careful now. Uh, what about you and Emily? Got anything special planned for the coming days? Mm, you know, just dinner with the family. And Mildred. <laughs> she joined us last year. Watch out with the eggnog is all I can say. Ah, good tip. I best get some more just in case. And maybe some antacid. Well, I'd best get on. I have to check on the oven. Or Santa will have to eat charcoal when he stops by tonight. <laughs> all right. Best get back to it myself. Give our love to Barry and the kids. And Santa, if you happen to see him. Will do. You and Emily have a great Christmas too, okay? See handwriting on this one. Night before the big day, I could barely sleep. House was so quiet, I could hear my heartbeat. But then I heard a rumble. I wondered, oh, could this be the famous Batman coming down the chimney? I cracked open my door to catch a glimpse of the same thing. say that my dad drank much more than most this time of year he said to double his dose i'm not saying it's wrong and i'm not saying it's right but you log ain't the only thing burning that night oh it's a funny story Another satisfied customer. Unless it's Bill's. Now that I'm older and I've settled down, it's late December, there's no tree to be found. place.
one parcel. <laughs> Wow, a visit from the Poker King. I humbly thank you for the honor. The Poker King hath brought a parcel for the Jack of All Trades. Ooh boy, Frank came through once again. A ah, package from Frank, huh? What's in it? You don't want to know, Thomas. You don't want to know. But what I will tell you, I'm kicking off the new year with a bang. <laughs> I better put this somewhere dry. And then it's back to reading Doyle Brunson's super system. Oh, you're in trouble this Sunday, sir. <laughs> I'm glad I can blame the cold for my suddenly shaking hands. <laughs> nice spin, sir. Nice spin indeed. Anyway, later, Thomas, and take care on those icy roads. Hey, Thomas, do you think it'll ever stop snowing? I'm glad it's the last day before Christmas break. Well, sorry, Frank. They're forecasting snow until at least the new year. But hey, about Christmas. Meredith bailed on us, which leaves us with a bit more food than we can handle. Maybe you'd like to volunteer and help us eat it tomorrow evening. Christmas dinner at the Weiss residence. That sounds great, Thomas, but I'm afraid I'm all tied up. The Knicks are playing the Celtics. I think the Celtics will go all the way this year, but I wouldn't count out an upset at the Garden. I'm not going to give you betting advice, Frank. I'm going to have to sleep on it, but you know I can't pass up a juicy bet. Hey, Thomas, before you go home, I need a favor. Can you help me with that guy over there? He said he's looking for a job, but I really gotta run now. Try to find out what he's made of, okay? <laughs> Good luck! Hello, young man. I heard you were looking for a job. My name's Thomas Weiss, and I've been working for the Postal Service for nearly 40 years. Hi, I'm Matt Kearney. I'm glad someone finally showed up. Nice to meet you, Matt. Do you have somewhere else to be right now? Uh, not right now, but I don't have all day. Okay, let's keep going then. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm basically a computer expert, kind of in between jobs right now. I've been programming since I was 11 years old. I'm looking to start my own software company. But I assume you are aware that we don't have computers here. Yes, and that's where I come in. I can overhaul this old-fashioned operation and have it running twice as efficiently with the help of computers. Wow, that sounds quite promising. Oh, it's only the beginning. In the future, people won't write letters anymore, and parcels will be delivered by battery-powered mini-helicopters. Uh, right, okay. But let's focus a bit more on the here and now. Do you enjoy working with customers? I think everyone would enjoy someone who skips the small talk and gets the job done as soon as possible. Well, that may be, but my question was if you enjoy working with customers. Sure, sure. I love people. I love helping people. Could we wrap this up now, please? I don't think working here requires an extensive interview process. I'd like to ask one more question, actually. 
what salary are you looking for? I know I can't ask for a salary in the computer expert range, but I would expect a salary that reflects a senior position. Thanks for applying. We'll be in touch. Okay. But please be aware that I've also received other offers. Bye. Yep, hello. Hey, honey, it's me. Finally found time to call. I'm having such a busy day. Did you invite anyone else over for tomorrow? Yes, I did, but no takers. So it's just you, me, and Mildred. Or is Beth coming as well? Yeah, Beth is coming. So happy I could finally change her mind. <laughs> nice work. It also means a little less Mildred. Oh, Thomas Weiss. <laughs> no, this is not funny. Mildred is a sweetheart. And you better wear the Christmas sweater she knitted for you last year. <laughs> I love Christmas sweaters, so don't worry about it. <laughs> great. So I won't be the only one looking stupid. Oh, by the way, I've got great news. We finally found someone to take some shifts off my hands. That's fantastic. No more 60-hour work weeks. I also had a job interview today. I wasn't at the interview, but I was introduced to him after he was hired. Did he wear glasses? Yes, he did. Did he have curly hair? Yeah. Are we playing Guess Who? His name is Matt. Matt Kearney. He said he's going to completely overhaul our computer system. That's the guy I interviewed this afternoon. Really? Did you like him? He made my blood boil. That kid's a piece of work. Yikes. But it doesn't matter. He'll be taking the load off my shoulders. And I won't be working alongside him anyway. You'll probably see him more often than I will. And there I was, thinking I dodged a bullet. We'll see how it all pans out. Oh, gotta go now. Bye, hun. The yo-yo started out as a weapon in the Philippines during the 16th century, before being introduced to the United States as a toy in 1929. It weighed four pounds and had a 20-foot cord. Australian rower Bobby Pierce won the 1928 Olympic Games against eight other competitors, even though he stopped during the race to let ducks pass in front of him. Vice residence, good morning. Hey, Dad. It's me. Hey there, Em. Ready to have a wise Christmas? <laughs> I was hoping to hear one of your special holiday puns. Merry Christmas to you, too. I wish I was in P.O. right now. Careful what you wish for. This white Christmas is also a very cold Christmas. <laughs> uh, wish I were building a snowman instead of at it. Fine mess I got myself into, huh? Yeah, it's not perfect, Meredith, but you'll be okay. Thanks, Dad. I think I will be. Work's progressing nicely, actually. And Tess is coming over later. She's also stuck here. We're going to try to cook up some semblance of a Christmas meal. Oh, that's good to hear, Em. 
I hope you have a great day, Em. Thanks, Dad. You too. Don't forget to leave some room for Mom's lemon mashed potatoes. Oh, that reminds me. I need to try to pry that secret recipe out of her. I'm gonna call her at the motel right now. Thanks for talking, Dad. And Merry Death Christmas. Missile Thomas wishes you the same. Oh, I did not hear that. <laughs> Love you. Oh, Mildred, you shouldn't have. We already have the most beautiful pair of Christmas sweaters in the world. And now we have two sweaters each. <laughs> you must have put so much work into them. Oh, please, don't mention it, dearie. Knitting sweaters can be quite straining. But knowing how happy they make you always makes up for it. Well, we're so grateful. Right, Thomas? They're beautiful. Thank you so much, Mildred. I especially like that our sweaters have the same pattern, so I don't have to look in the mirror to admire it. Oh, Thomas, that makes me so happy to hear. I can't wait to start working on next year's designs. I've also made sweaters for Frank and Jack and Robert and Bert, but they all said that wool gives them an allergic reaction. Isn't that a coincidence? Beth, I hope you aren't allergic to wool. You're not going to believe the coincidence, Mildred, but yes, I actually am. And it's such a shame. If only I, too, could celebrate Christmas wearing one of those beautiful sweaters. Anyway, uh, Emily, would you be a darling and pass me the peas, please? Peas? I, I don't... Oh, you mean the string beans. I suppose peas would have gone lovely with the meal as well, now that you mention it. Right, Thomas? Peas, beans, it's all green to me. Oh, yes, of course, I meant the string beans. Of course, silly me. But let me get on with it. It's time for my presents now. And you may have already guessed that they're books. Mildred, why don't you open yours first? Well, I'm not really one for presents, but I appreciate the gesture. <laughs> Let's see now. The cat's pajamas. I've never heard of it. But it has a nice title, I suppose. It's an encyclopedia about cats. A whiskerpedia, if you will. Someone drew my attention to it, and I immediately thought of you. Oh, well, isn't that lovely? Such a heartfelt gift, isn't it, Thomas? That it is, Emily. That it is. It is a nice gift, Beth. Thank you. It was my pleasure, Mildred. And now for Emily's gift. Why, thank you, Beth. I do always appreciate your taste in books, so I'm looking forward to The Countess and the Carpenter. Oh, would you look at that? Is this a romance novel? I've never really read one of those. Right in one guess, Emily. I hear the writer Summers here, so this book is locally sourced, so to speak. And, dare I say it, the prose is quite... compelling in the romance department, if you catch my drift. <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> Beth, you are something else. Thank you. This will certainly get a nice spot on our bookcase. Ah, good to know the romance department is in our bookcase now, so I'll know where to find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to reading it already. Thank you so much, dear Beth. You're welcome, Emily. I'm sure you'll love it. Okay, Thomas, it's your turn now. Let's see... Crazy sports facts, too. Even more crazy sports facts. Whew, boy, I love this stuff. I'm actually reading part one at the moment, so I can tuck into this straight after. Thanks, Beth. You're welcome, Thomas. And you're right, there's some fascinating tidbits in part one as well. 
Even if one no longer actively plays sports, it's at least fun to read about it, right? Hey now, kids playing basketball still regret it when they challenge the mailman for a game of horse. Well, there's no shame in admitting that you're not getting any younger, Thomas. In fact, none of us are exactly spring chickens anymore. Things like your arthritis can't magically be wished away by positive thinking. You're right, Emily, but let's not burden our lovely guests with this right now. Uh, who's up for some blueberry pie? Speaking of blueberries, my bridge partner, Edna's niece, discovered this mole last week. Hold that thought, Mildred. I really need to take this. Hello? Hi there. Could you put me through to Meredith Weiss, please? Uh, excuse me, who is this? Oh, it's Steve. Steve Mitchell, from work. Is Meredith there? You're talking to her father in Oregon. She's at home, celebrating Christmas. Wait, what? Christmas? Uh, oh my gosh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, is it Christmas already? Gosh, I, I totally missed that. Uh, I've employed a couple of old nighters. <sighs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna splash some water on my face. Sorry again, Mr. Weiss. Enjoy your evening. Bye. Merry Christmas. Everything okay, honey? Uh, that silly boss from Meredith's work called for some reason or other. Uh, never mind. Beth, you were saying? Uh, I wasn't, actually. But I was looking for a way to say this, and now's as good a time as any, I suppose. My dear friends... I am leaving Providence Oaks. <gasps> what? You're what? What's that, dear? Why? Well, before we move on to the sad part, let me first tell you the good part. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to be a grandmother. Oh, <laughs> Beth, that is amazing. Well, I'll be. Whose mother? I, I mean... <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, my son Daniel and his wife are expecting. Isn't that wonderful? But, and here's the proverbial kicker. You may remember that they moved to Savannah, Georgia a few years ago. So if you put two and two together... You're moving away to be with them. That's great, Beth. I'm so happy for you. That is marvelous, Beth. Congratulations. I wish you and your family all the happiness in the world. But I'll miss you something terrible. We all will. But we have to toast to the good news. Thomas, go pour us some brandy and I'll get the pie. Oh, Thomas, would you have any antacid? That eggnog is starting to stir up something indiscreet. Uh, on it. Now, let's celebrate this wonderful evening, ladies. Here's to a lovely old Christmas spent with good friends. Here, 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 here. here. Hey, Thomas. Did you see the game last night? Morning, Frank. Uh, nope. We had our Christmas dinner. What happened? The Celtics were up by 25 in the third quarter, but they still lost the game <laughs> in double overtime. Mm, so was it a big payday for you? <laughs> One of the biggest of the year. And now the odds are dropping for Boston. I'm going to bet on them to win it all this season. Nice move. Good luck, Frank. Thanks, Thomas. Have a good one today. P.O., it's the second day of Christmas, and I don't have turtle doves or partridges and pear trees, but you know what I do have? P.O. Positive or Pet Peas. Season's greetings to you too, Jack. It's, um, 
Angela no, here. Me. I forgot the package. Yes, I understand, but Maureen said... Does it really matter what Maureen said? I can't help that her orders have been delayed because of the snow. She should have just ordered sooner. It's not like New Year's Eve appeared on the calendar out of nowhere. That's true, but it was only two weeks ago that she decided to throw a celebration at the diner. And once we're sure we can host a proper party for everyone, you are also invited. <sighs> that sounds an awful lot like blackmail to me. Please come to my party, Nancy. But first, hand over a football team supply of cheesy dip, quiche, and sloppy joes. <laughs> I'm sure she didn't mean it that way, and I'm sure you're more than welcome either way. But I have to run now. Bye, Nancy. And hi, bye, Thomas. Bye, Kay. <sighs> Marine Hennessy strikes again. Pio would be a boring place without her. Boring? Drama-free might be the word you're looking for. One thing's for sure, she does not know how to run a business. Always bites off more than she can chew. And now I'm supposed to come to the rescue? Isn't this a great opportunity to generate some extra revenue? With the ridiculous discount she's demanding, it's mostly nothing but a great opportunity for a lot of extra work. Anyway, is that parcel for me? You can just put it on the counter. All right, since you asked so nicely. I've settled down It's late December There's no tree to be found Cause it helps Mary the Jew Now she wants a Christmas tree What am I to do? I told the baby I didn't think this would matter Besides those damn trees They're a real fire hazard And I have to show the doctor just diagnosed me with a little something called PTCTFSD. Um, that's post traumatic Christmas tree fire stress disorder. It's a real thing. You can look it up. Oh, it's a funny story. At least it is to me. But for others, especially my mother. That lives in it for me. I swear I'm not a liar. Daddy, with the Christmas tree on fire. Well, I swear I'm not a liar. Daddy, with the Christmas tree on fire. Kovac's family always heads to Arizona in the wintertime. And who can blame them? Neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom of night. Fancy handwriting on this one.
Somehow it's always nice when our neighbors get a letter. Here's to you, Andy and Toby. Another satisfied customer, unless it's Bills. Christmas gift? Maybe. Hey there! Looks like Santa's a little late this year. <laughs> if you keep ordering heavy parcels like this, Santa might just skip your house altogether. Oh, sorry, Thomas. Let me give you a hand. Uh, that must be the fire pit I ordered. Ah, now I can finally go ice fishing without freezing at the same time. <sighs> ice fishing? That sounds like a nice adventure. Well, you're in luck. Bert's out of town, so I could use someone else to talk to. Not that Bert talks that much. <laughs> uh, how about it? Tomorrow evening. Sure, let's do it. But you better make sure that fire pit is working. Perfect. I'll bring all the gear, but feel free to bring some booze. Hey, did you have a nice Christmas, by the way? Yeah, sure. Nice day off, great food. Hard to complain about that. Can't agree more. Anyways, I won't hold you up any longer. I, I need to assemble this baby. See you tomorrow, Thomas. I'll come pick you up. Out-of-towners, I'm assuming? Uh, welcome to Providence Oaks. Yeah, uh, just a second, my good man. Gabriel, can you figure out what's wrong with this blasted vehicle? Give me some good news here. I mean, I'm not really a car mechanic, Mr. Price. But I know the smoke isn't a good sign. <laughs> no duh, Einstein. Say, hey, Mr. Mailman, what's your story? Wait a minute. Aren't you Connor Price, KNW6 News? In the flesh, uh, are you a regular viewer? I tune in occasionally, enough to know you're quite the reporter. I see, and is yours a Nielsen family? With an autometer and everything. Nielsen? <laughs> no, the name's Weiss. Then how does that help me, huh? Gabe, if you don't know what you're doing, then why on God's green earth are you fiddling around with that engine? Just thought I'd pop up in the hood, Mr. Price. What, with the smoke and all? <laughs> it needs to vent. Needs to vent, huh? Hmm. Never have I felt more like a busted car engine. God! 
dying in this podunk country ass town. Bunch of freaking yokels. So, hey there. I see you've already had the privilege of the full Connor Price experience. <laughs> Quite the experience it was. <laughs> well worth the price of admission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Connor can be a bit much. Anyway, I'm Ilsa Richter, local TV segment producer turned car problem solver. And that sporting young man over there is Gabriel Serrano, local TV sound guy turned amateur mechanic. Emphasis on amateur. Hey, I never claimed to know anything about cars. Just because I used to be a studio tech, Mr. Price put me on engine duty. Anyway, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. I'm Thomas Weiss. And as the local mail carrier, I know just the guy to fix your car problem. If you mean young car service, I'm way ahead of you, Mr. Weiss. They're on their way right now. That's great, Ilsa. You're an even better car problem solver than you are a segment producer. Flattery will get you everywhere, Gabe. Ah, that must be Ben Young. You're in capable hands. He'll have you fixed up in no time. God, I hope so. We need to get to Melville, and we're already way behind schedule. Hey, Mr. Mailman. Come in here for a second, please. Uh, excuse me. Duty apparently calls. Happy travels. This is your alternative to working at the post office? Uh-huh. Hey, I'm new here. All of a sudden, I have to check in three people at once who want their own rooms. Separate but close to one another, all equipped with TV VCRs. And, well, long story short, I need to reach Emily Weiss, stat. I'm guessing the local post guy would know where to reach her. I happen to know her home number by heart. It's 555-8039. Thank you. 555-8039. Come on, pick up already. I'll just leave the parcel here on the counter. Bye. <laughs> They're already gone. Mighty fast towing there, Ben. That's the last one. Whew.
Hey, if it isn't Connor Price. Oh, that's him, huh? He's taller than he looks on TV. I was hoping you'd be spared the Connor Price experience. Suffice it to say, he was not friendly. Wow, sounds like a real jerk. Mr. Price? Aren't you supposed to be in Melville? Well, hey there. Good to see you, man. Yeah, change of plans, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, hi, ma'am. I don't think we've met. Uh, Connor Price, K&W6. <laughs> Welcome to the Oregon Trail Motel, sir. Better get to work, honey. I'll see you tonight. Okay, what's up with her? Christmas hangover? No, it's just that I told her about our earlier meeting. Oh, I see. Yeah, about that. <sighs> Listen, I'm man enough to admit that it wasn't my finest hour. I'm usually a lot more easygoing. In fact, the Willamette Week once called me one of the most likable faces in local broadcasting. Well, my grandma used to say that it's easy to be nice when everything's fine. Staying nice when you're under pressure it takes a bit more effort. Uh-huh. Well, when my car isn't breaking down during a tight shooting schedule, I'm a pretty swell guy. Believe me, that's the price guarantee. <laughs> So, you're obviously not in Melville. Ha, no, that's the change of plans I was referring to. It turns out we need some parts that the garage doesn't have in stock, so Young's having them shipped over ASAP. But in the meantime, we've decided to stay right here in lovely picturesque, whatchamacallit, USA. But weren't you supposed to be shooting something in Melville? Yeah, well, to be honest, all these little villages look pretty much the same to me anyway. See, we're supposed to be shooting some remotes on local end-of-year festivities and such. A grand kickoff to our special series on small-town American life. And it doesn't really make much of a difference if we start here or in freaking Melville. <laughs> Except, of course, that... Providence Oaks is way nicer than frickin' Melville. I was gonna say, this town has warmth. I like warmth. And so do our viewers, I'm betting. So get ready for your town to be featured in part one of The Oregon Trail. Ahem, <laughs> title pending. Might be a little too on the nose. I hear there's some sort of computer game with that name now. No, I don't really know much about computers. That's more my daughter's area of expertise. See, this is what I'm talking about. Real conversations with real Americans, right? But as fun as this is, I should be turning in. The three of us each got our own quaint little room. Mine's non-smoking, unfortunately. Still beats Gabriel's. His doesn't even have a TV. Can you believe it? Oh, the irony. Anyway, great banter. See you around, my main mailman. Bye. From 1912 to 1948, architecture was an Olympic discipline. Spanish singer Julio Iglesias used to be a professional goalkeeper. When recovering from a career-ending accident, a nurse gave him a guitar so that he could recover the dexterity of his hands. In learning to play, he discovered his musical talent. It is out there, y'all. Want to hear a PO positive? You tuned into the right frequency. PO positive for pet peeve. 
Tier 1 from Mildred Meow Jenkins. Hi, Jack. I would like to thank our own Robert Harris. Okay, let's get this to its destination. Hi, Beth. I got a delivery for you. Uh, where do you want it? Oh, dear, Thomas. I almost didn't see you come in there. I was lost in thought, I suppose. Please just put it on the counter, if you will. Thank you. And... Thank you again for a lovely Christmas dinner. I had a marvelous time with you all. We loved having you over, Beth, as always. Emily and I had a great time. Although always is not going to last forever, it seems. Well put, Thomas. I do like that. It was a bit unexpected. But I can understand why the grass is greener in the south for you right now. My reason for leaving is wonderful, for sure. I can only count myself fortunate. And I wouldn't miss a thing now that the little one is on the way. Oh, but I will miss you too. As Helen Keller once wrote, So long as the memory of certain beloved friends lives in my heart, I shall say that life is good. We'll miss you too, Beth. So, haven't you ever thought of moving closer to Meredith over all these years? She is living quite a ways away, right? <sighs> no. Even though I love my daughter like crazy, she never stops working. So moving out there wouldn't make much of a difference, I don't think. She's just like me, I guess. Can't sit still. She just takes bigger steps. Who knows, maybe Meredith will even make it out here one day. <laughs> and there's always the phone, of course. And don't forget the postal service. Binding the nation together. Well, I won't keep you any longer, Thomas. I need to sort through this new delivery you've just brought in. And believe you me, that's going to take me a while. I understand. It's best to take your time with things like that. Exactly. Whether one likes it or not. Until next time, my friend. Up and at em. See you, Beth.
part and parcel. <laughs> Fancy handwriting on this one. Christmas gift? Maybe. Okay, so we still need to check Spanner Dam for the mood shots. According to this, it offers damn fine views. So. Hey, Mr. Mailman. Come on over. Talk to us for a sec. Gabe. We don't have time for idle chit-chat. He can help us out, Ilsa. No one knows the town like a mailman. Right, Mr. Weiss? Hey, Mr. Serrano. Miss Richter. Please, call us Gabe and Ilsa. He can call you Gabe and Ilsa. I prefer Miss Segment Producer Extraordinaire. And you can call me P.O.'s premier parcel provider. Thomas, for short. <laughs> anyway, we're scouting out this beautiful town of yours for our report on small town America. It's great, but we could use the inside track. So, any secret spots we're bound to miss, but shouldn't? Well... The watchtower up at Eagle Peak. You can take in the view among the treetops. But, make sure you watch out for those creaky steps. Oh, hey Maureen. Now, here's your coffee, folks. Sorry for the delay. <sighs> Fawcett's been acting up again, which should have been fixed yesterday. Oh, you want me to check on it, Miss Hennessy? Oh, now look at you. My knight in woolen armor. Would you, dear? I can take a look. Well, isn't that nice of you? Uh, back of the kitchen, honey. Ashley, someone who does know what he's doing is coming in. Uh, show him where the busted faucet is. A and stay out of his way. Ashley's a sweetheart, but when it comes to fixing things, <laughs> that boy is all thumbs. See, this is what the segment should be. Interacting with the townsfolk, helping out. I love it. Oh, such a nice fellow. Yeah, you're in good hands, Maureen. Gabriel may look and act like a naive little pup, but he can fix anything. Well, except for our van. But other than that... Oh, is that a fact? Well, in that case, I can think of a few more things he could fix around here, if you catch my drift. 
We'll just pretend we didn't hear that, right? Hmm. Uh, let me just go check him out. Uh, check on him, I mean. <laughs> so, anyway. So? Oh, uh, wait. You had the Connor Price experience the other day. Have you recovered yet? <laughs> I actually encountered him outside the motel yesterday evening. We had a nice chat about your new plans. Really? Oh, did he greet you with, good to see you, man? Indeed, he was quite enthusiastic. That's his go-to when he's forgotten your name. It's good to see you, man, for guys, and hey, lady, for gals. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't worry about it, though. He called me Lisa for the better part of a year. Connor's a lot. But I guess after this week, I can update my resume with not just segment producer and car problem solver, but also... Connor Price Wrangler. Gabriel seems very nice, though. That should make things easier. Oh, yeah. He's a big old puppy dog. He's as uncomplicated as Connor is complicated. So, that's a welcome antidote. Well, now, sounds like someone is getting a little warm under the collar for our Gabriel. Just between you and me, honey. I have a hunch that feeling is more than mutual. <laughs> Maureen, you shouldn't startle people like that. All I know is, I just spent five minutes with our knight in the kitchen, and during that time, he mentioned Ilsa about 12 times. Really? Well, uh... Faucet's all better now, Mo. And we should be hitting the road right about now. Right. Thanks, Maureen. Nice talking to you, Thomas. Bye now, folks. Be sure to check in again soon, you hear? Huh. These TV folks sure know how to liven things up, don't they? Indeed, Maureen. You haven't even met the main event, Connor Price. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, you know about my little New Year's Eve shindig, right? I'm counting on you and Emily. We'll party like it's 1986. Because it will be. <laughs> of course we'll be there. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Best get back to it. See you, Mo. Bye now.
Okay, let's get this to its destination. Ah, look who's here. Hey, Thomas. Yeah, I needed to take care of some stuff. Hardly any customers at the post office anyway. Aren't you at least a little worried that Walter Morgan might show up? Morgan? I don't think so. Last time that city slicker tried driving in the snow, he totaled his car against the deer statue. Can't say that you're wrong there, Frank. That big sucker you're carrying is for me, huh? Right on time. It's all coming together. Hey, Thomas, you can keep a little secret, right? Of course, Frank. Great. It's not a big deal in any case. A buddy of mine was able to get his hands on some premium quality fireworks. I'm selling them with a nice profit. And anything I can't sell, well... Let's just say you want to be outside Moe's Diner when the clock strikes 12 on New Year's Eve. Frank, that sounds illegal and dangerous. In other words, classic Frank Coleman. Just how I like it. Haha, <laughs> Thomas. Wouldn't life be boring without a walk on the wild side every now and then? This sounds pretty cool, Frank. I bet the whole town will talk about it for days. Days? How about weeks? I've got a huge stockpile here. I better finish up, Thomas. Can't keep the customers waiting forever. All right, Frank. See you at the office. They must be out of town for the holidays. Another day, another dollar. <laughs> I'm starting to sound like Frank. it for today. Back to the post office. I'll get it. Hello? Uh, uh, very good evening. A am I talking to Mrs. Uh, Emily Weiss? Yes, sir. That would be me. Ah, fantastic. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Carmichael, and I represent Fly Into Florida. Oh, uh, hi there. I, I have great news for you, Mrs. Weiss. It's been a while, but... Uh, <laughs> Do you perhaps remember entering into our fly into Florida sweepstakes? Um, now that you mention it, I think so. Yeah, 
Was that the one on the back of the juice carton? That's the one. And I am more than happy to tell you that you are the winner of the grand prize. <sighs> the grand prize? Wow, uh, fantastic. Um, I'm afraid I've forgotten what it was. Could you refresh my memory a little bit? Uh, uh no problem, Mrs. Weiss. Uh, you have won a two-week trip to Florida for two. Wow, F Florida? Really? I won? I have never won anything in my life. Uh, hold on, I need to tell my husband. Honey, we won! I'm talking to a gentleman from flying to Florida. And he says we've won a two-week holiday for two. Get out of here, Florida? <laughs> wow! <laughs> Isn't it great? We're so happy. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You've got plenty of time to let it all sink in. Uh, next, we'll be sending you an extra special envelope. It will contain a confirmation letter, airline tickets, hotel tickets, and I totally forgot to say this earlier, a $500 check covering any additional expenses. Oh, wow, I can't believe this is happening. Well, it most definitely is, Mrs. Weiss. And we'll be making sure you both have the time of your life. There's one thing I must stress, the dates can't be altered. So if you have plans for the first two weeks of September, this would be a great moment to change them. And I hope this answers all of your questions for now. Congratulations on winning. And we look forward to seeing you fly into Florida. Thank you. Bye. I, I think I need to sit down for a moment. Oh, Florida. Oh, uh, that's Robert. S sorry, honey. I, I can't celebrate with you right now. But I'll make it up to you tomorrow night at Moe's. Mm, I will hold you to that. <laughs> Have fun on the ice, hun. And when you start to freeze out there, just think of sunny Florida. Oh boy. Drilling a hole, getting that fire pit going. Ice fishing's a lot of work. That's cold, but we're fishing all right. Are you sure that the fire won't melt the ice? I didn't bring my swim trunks. <laughs> Don't worry, Thomas. He travels mostly upwards. And hopefully also in our direction. Man, it's nice out here. This setting could use a guitar. Yeah, guitar tunes would sound nice right now. It'd be a shame to disturb the peace now, though. Hey, what was Emily going on about when I picked you up? You guys are going to Florida? Yeah. Apparently, we won a two-week trip. Wow, congrats. Not that Florida's my cup of tea, if I'm honest. Hmm. Someplace else you'd rather go? I'm perfectly fine staying right here. EO is great, but is it also a good place to meet someone? Uh, I know what you're hitting at. The answer's no, of course. But maybe this is what I need right now. I don't know, Robert. Haven't you been by yourself long enough now? <sighs> Wouldn't it be ideal if Mrs. Wright dropped by my house one day? Wouldn't it also be ideal if we caught the winning lottery ticket from this here frozen lake? <laughs> Let's drink to that. Would be a shame if Emily filled that flask of yours for nothing. Ha! Finally a sensible remark. Cheers! Now let's catch a fish and get the hell out of here. <laughs>